Still on national matter, the Lagos State Government on Wednesday joined the League of State Government that have inaugurated the State Community Policing Advisory Committee and its operation arm, the State Committee Policing Committee, SCPC. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sohulu, said the event marked a turning point in the government's deliberate effort to re-strategize and rethink the security architecture through the Community Policing Initiative that was proposed by the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Abakar Adamu. The governor noted that the Community Policing Security Initiative in, is, in the country is long overdue adding that the reform is being implemented with the objective to address inadequacies of the current policing model, which he said has failed to engage members of local communities and neighborhoods in knowledge sharing and intelligence gathering that could help in nipping crimes in the board. And joining us via Zoom is DSP Bala Elkan Elkana, PRO Lagos State Police Command, to discuss this. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? I can Do hear we have you. Good afternoon. On the line? All right, until we are able to connect to him. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. How will this new initiative evolve to fundamental changes in the way the government uh, responds to security matters? Well, uh, let me start by saying that uh, community policing is not about the government but about the people right. it is a policing strategy that is centered on the people the emphasis here is involving the people in policing their local communities which is the essence of policing the old style mostly is uh, police experts thinking that they, they can do it alone we can police the communities alone, and we have seen that that style has failed. We have also seen that the style has created a big gap between the police and the people that we're supposed to uh, police. So the best approach is bringing everybody on board because crime itself is community-centered. If Christ if crime is community-centered, then the approach to solving it must also be community-centered, which is the essence. So, moving policing from the top to the grassroots, the grassroots not taking decisions for itself, working together with the police, mobilizing resources together, identifying policing needs of their communities, and solving them together. And that will bring about more effective crime prevention approach, reducing the level of crime to the barest minimum. If everybody has a sense of um, uh, belongingness, if everybody also see policing as everybody's uh, responsibility, if decisions are collectively taken and implemented, then definitely we will see more results than what we have in now. Mm -hmm. Well, do you also think that this initiative will make the police proactive in discharging their statutory duties, much as you say it's a collective uh, responsibility now? Absolutely. The emphasis mostly of community policing is a proactive uh, policing style preventing the crime before it even it uh, happens, identify uh, those gaps in the community and uh, filling the gaps together. And involving the communities again, remove so much burden from the police because, um, you see, part of what we're going to implement at the end of this is having um, uh, community policing officers from the grassroots which will focus mainly on the um, non-sensitive policing duties in their neighborhoods. That will enable the police also focus on more serious issues that have to do with that uh, community. Mm -hmm. Then the regular meeting between the police and um, other stakeholders and partners within the communities also 
will help in problem solving, identifying the problems even before they occur, and um, solving them collectively. So you see, it's more of a proactive uh, style, not just sitting down waiting for it to happen before you respond. You know, because uh, is sometimes becoming more tiring for you responding to the same issue over and over, and that seems to have no uh, end. So it's better sitting down to look at it from the root, uh, identifying the root cause of that problem, and um, tackling it once and for all. So it's more of proactivity than the reactive uh, strategy. But does this in any way conflict with the current police structure? Not at all. What we are having is uh, strengthening the current policing structure, making it more effective, making it people-oriented, making it people-centered, uh, making it more participatory and result-oriented. So I think this is the best thing that can ever happen to us because over the years we have been uh, working towards this. A lot of committees were set, a lot of programs were rolled out, and now we are seeing the actualization of it under the current uh, leadership. Hmm. All right, before I let you go, DSP, uh, there's, re recently there's been a lot you know, of distrust within the community and the police, even if you follow what has just happened with uh, the killing, the unfortunate killing of Tina Ezekwe. How does the police intend to bridge this gap? And uh, as a follow-up on that also, we hear that police have stopped uh, protesters from protesting uh, today in Iyanowuru you know, concerning that young girl's death. What's your response to this? Well, let me start with the first one. There is no way you can build trust and confidence without talking, without communicating. You must, first of all, build relationships. And you can build relationships if there is no communication between you, if there is no mutual understanding between you. What we are having, police move in with patrol vehicles, patrol the neighborhoods, and they walk out. We hardly talk to the people. We hardly interact with our people. There was a survey carried out even before the IDP decided to implement this. There was a survey carrying out asking people, when last did you see the police patrol the streets where you live or where you work? Some people, uh, their, their response is we only see the police when they come to arrest and they are out. So, as far as they are concerned, police are strangers in their neighborhood. But with this style, we are interacting with the people. We are sitting down with the people. We are talking with them. We are building relationships. And over time, they will get to understand our sentiments. They will get to understand our limitations. They will get to understand our challenges. We will also understand public sentiment. We will be able to work together in a more cordial manner for mutual benefit. So this approach will close that gap. This approach will build more trust. This approach will build more confidence. This approach will foster a better working relationship between the police and the citizens that we are serving. Then the second issue, yeah. let me correct the impression we did not stop the protest. All the guys that plan the protest are our good friends. We have been talking. There was this planned protest because there was a gap in communication as to the steps police have taken. And when they approach us, and we itemized all the things we have done, and they also heard from the families of uh, from the family of Tina what the police have done from the onset. They are thinking, you know, there is this false uh, information that went out that when Tina was shot, she was abandoned. Hospital also rejected her. She was not treated. And that was the wrong information they got entirely. Until they spoke with the family and until also they heard from us, they discovered that we actually took her to hospital. We bear all the financial costs, the medical expenses, everything will bear the cost. 
because it's not a burden that the family should carry in the first place because they did not bargain for this. We carried out that. We stood by Tina all those, all those while she has been on admission until she passed on. And we did not stop at that. We identified the officers that shot Tina. We got them arrested. We placed them under investigation. They have seen clearly our at the end of the investigation, they were indicted. And we told them also the step that we have moved to. The family of Tina, we are here, the, the, her brothers who are witnesses when it happened came to testify during the, the disciplinary uh, proceeding stage. Because you can't take a seven policeman to court. You first of all must treat him all the privileges and immunity that he's enjoying as a police officer. You must initiate the process that we first of all dismiss him from service, then take him to the civil court. That is the stage in which we are now, and we are getting close to rounding it up. Then the next stage is we will be in the civil court where they will face the full weight of the law. And every step we are taking, we are giving update to members of the public so that they can follow up. Even when we are in court, we will mention the name of the court for people to be able to follow up the, the case until judgment is passed by the court. Right. So you. the transparency in the system is what makes them on their own to even suspend the process, the, 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 the proposed protest. Nobody stopped them. It is a, a voluntary decision okay. that they took. All right. Thank you so very much, DSP Bala Elkana, for the insight you brought to the news this afternoon. Thank you for having me.